was going down the street, minding his business, and certain, and then at one point the officers just turned down the street and, and, and blocked him off. And so they never announced they were officers. They had hoodies. And if, if it was me, I would be totally terrified. This is the same district the five tactical officers involved in the shooting work out of. They accused the city and police department of not following its own procedures and failing to comply with the federal consent decree put in place after the Laquan McDonald shooting. They also argue instead of de-escalating the situation after Reed was forced to pull over last March, they did the opposite by screaming commands with their guns drawn. Reed in the driver's seat with five plainclothes officers rushing out of an unmarked car toward the 26 year old. Copa says Reed was pulled over for a seatbelt violation. Copa also says Reed fired first, hitting an officer in the arm. The head of Copa, however, wrote a letter to police superintendent Larry Snelling questioning the ability of the officers to see a seatbelt violation, partially due to the tinted glass on the car, and questioned the 96 rounds officers fired at. At Reed, including when he was on the ground. Copa's chief has also been doing media interviews since the release of the body cam footage, something the superintendent has called inappropriate while it is still being investigated. Those behind the lawsuit and Reed's family say not only was the traffic stop inappropriate, but also unlawful, and so was the amount of force used. Nothing brings Dexter back. But this family doesn't want it to happen to yet another family in the city. June 30th, of Chicago. this door was shattered by gunfire. It happened at the Gold Forever Jewelry Store on Lee Boulevard. Now, this timestamp security video captures the moment the Ford F 150 pulls into the parking lot. Then at 152, it pulls out and someone shoots. If you take a closer look, you can actually see the gun light up outside the passenger window. Detectives say a nearby license plate reader pinged the plate, showing its owner, at the time, Deputy Michael Soto, one of their own. Now, the sheriff was not available for an interview today, but he did send me over a statement that says what Soto did betrayed the community's trust and nobody is above the law. He also said he will continue to hold his agency members to the highest standard. One year ago, NBC2 told you about Soto, who was off duty in his truck at the time he was pulled over in Lehigh Acres for speeding. At first, there were questions about Soto's sobriety, but the sheriff's office told us his commander came out to the scene and determined he was having some sort of medical emergency, eventually allowing him to go home. Records show he was then taken off of patrol after that incident and moved to corrections until he resigned on July 2nd. Soto was charged with shooting into a building with a person nearby. Good morning and welcome to the Bad Apple Report. It's 7.30 a.m., bright and early right here at home on the range. Thank you so much for being here today, folks. You know, I really appreciate it and I, I missed you guys yesterday. It was good to take a day off, though. I didn't even think about bad apples at all yesterday, but I was thinking about you guys. The jailer choked this handcuffed woman unconscious in Georgia, the feds say. And so let's talk about this jailer. Now he's prison bound. Ooh, what is that? Okay. What's a he jailer doing choking a she prisoner? Let's find that out. A detention officer accused of choking a handcuffed woman until she passed out at a Georgia jail is now going to prison. I didn't know they had that close of a contact with, I thought there was, I don't know. I don't know. Never been to prison. Don't plan on going. Monique Clark, 32, has been sentenced to four years in prison. Monique. The U.S. Attorney's Office in the Northern District of Georgia said on August 7th, that's no reason to choke her. Okay. But the 48-month sentence exceeds the 33-month sentence jointly recommended by both government prosecutors and Clark's attorneys. The defense attorney Devin Rafas told McClatchy News. It's an unusually long three-day sentencing hearing. The judge pushed for higher sentencing guidelines, arguing that the woman had sustained... Oh, looky there, you guys. It's a misprint. That's what's going on here. It says Monique Clark, 32, has been sentenced to four years in prison. You know what? I'd be willing to bet that that he that they said who was choking her is actually a she and is Monique. I don't know. 
I hate to be so confusing first thing in the morning, but let's just do this. In an unusually long three-day sentencing hearing, the judge pushed for higher sentencing guidelines, arguing that the woman had sustained serious bodily injury. Because Clark pleaded guilty, see, Monique Clark, Monique, he can't appeal the sentence. What the hell's going on? Rafus and Clark expressed remorse in multiple statements, saying he made a bad decision. Well, I think it's a she. On June 5th, 2023, a woman was arrested and brought to the North Fulton County Jail outside Atlanta where Clark, maybe Clark's a hermaphrodite, I don't know, was working an overtime shift according to an indictment and sentencing memorandum. The arrestee needed to take a photo before undergoing a full body x-ray, but she was intoxicated and wouldn't stand still for the camera, officials said. So now I'm going to assume Monique Clark is a she. Okay, so Monique the 32-year-old jailer is the one who's going to jail for four years. Typically, in that case, officers would take the detainee to a cell, sober up, try the scanning process later, according to federal officials. But Clark tried to force the woman who was handcuffed to stand for the camera, the officials said. When she again refused, Clark is accused of choking her without, ju- uh, without justification. Hey, I choke folks, so I advise you to cooperate. It says here that he said, according to prosecutors, but we all know it's she said. Hold your face before you lose your breath. Whoa. The choice is yours. He didn't let go and she passed out, officials said. Let's assume it's she didn't let go and she passed out. That's what the officials said. One of the police officers called an ambulance and a supervisor and Monique Clark was arrested the next day. Monique Clark was indicted in September on one count of deprivation of rights under the color of law and pleaded guilty in March. This defendant's violent assault on a handcuffed arrestee rendered her unconscious and is simply inexcusable, Assistant Attorney General Kristen Clark said in the release. As we have seen too many times, chokeholds and neck restraints can prove deadly. Mm -hmm. Rafus said the arrestee has filed a civil law suit but didn't provide her medical records for the criminal case to show the severity of her injuries and help prove serious bodily injury. Oh, well, she'll do it in due time, I'm sure. This is one case I'll remember forever, ever, Rafus said. The Fulton County blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, so we know that Monique Clark, age 32, has been sentenced to four years for being a bad apple. We begin with a News 12 exclusive. Two Nassau Corrections officers are under investigation, and the head of the sheriff's canine unit is also being investigated. News 12's Kevin Vesey is outside the county jail right now. Kevin, what do these investigations involve? Yeah, so Antoinette, those two correction officers are accused of using excessive force against an inmate at the jail, and the leader of the canine unit is facing allegations of animal abuse. And this is only the latest scandal to hit this troubled facility. Shocking allegations against two Nassau correction officers. The Sheriff's Office of Internal Affairs confirming to News 12 they're investigating allegations of excessive force against an inmate. There needs to be accountability. Civil rights attorney Frederick Brewington says there needs to be a transparent investigation. It's the latest blemish against a facility where multiple inmates died in recent years. People go to jail um, uh, and uh, they should not necessarily um, be subjected uh, to um, of violence. The sheriff's office would not say if the officers are still on the job. A statement from the correction officers benevolent association president says our officers risk their lives every day maintaining the safety and security of everyone in our jail. There is a presumption of innocence and we will fight these suspensions which came down before all the facts were presented. In a separate case the Nassau district attorney is investigating the head of the sheriff's canine unit for alleged animal abuse. Advocates for the incarcerated say it's time for an independent body to monitor the jail. There is a real lack of transparency as to what happens behind bars. Certainly, people who are behind bars need support and less trauma, not more trauma. And at this point, we still do not have details about the alleged animal abuse or the allegations of excessive force here at the jail, though the Nassau County Sheriff Anthony LaRocco did tell us that the inmate did not sustain a serious injury. Can you folks imagine anything more frightening than a bunch of tactical killers roaming around the streets, pulling you over? 
for your tented windows? Before the gunfight with Dexter Reed, Chicago cops made 50 traffic stops in just three days. As a civilian office of police accountability investigates the March 21 shooting and the traffic stop that sparked it, the oversight agency has also launched a probe to determine whether other stops by the officers were unjustified. Records showed. We're going to watch that video together here in a second, you guys. But for now, let's see what this is really all about. In the days and hours before a deadly shootout with Dexter Reed, tactical police officers conducted dozens of uneventful traffic stops on Chicago's west side, none of which appear to have generated so much as a ticket. I bet it generated a lot of fear in those dozens of stops with a full tactical team descending upon you. As the civilian police off accountability continues to investigate the March 21 shooting and the traffic stop that sparked it, the oversight agency has also launched a probe to determine whether those other stops were unjustified. Body camera footage obtained by the Sun-Times shows that the five officers who were involved in the shooting conducted 50 traffic stops between March 19th and March 21st including eight stops that were made in the roughly three hours before they encountered Reed. Okay. In the wake of the shooting, Chicago Police Superintendent Larry Snelling has pushed to overhaul the department's controversial traffic stop practices under an ongoing federal consent decree. Advocates and activists argue the pace of court-ordered reform is too slow to address a pressing issue that was brought into sharp focus when Reed was fatally shot. Many have called on the department to immediately disband its tactical units and stop using traffic stops as an excuse to conduct searches. Looky there, guys. They mag-dumped on him big time. Reed was boxed in by two unmarked police vehicles, Hmm. then resisted orders and shot one of the officers. The four other cops fired back, firing nearly 100 rounds, striking Reed 13 times, according to CO whatever. Okay, it's still unclear why he was pulled over. Well, apparently he needed to be shot. That's why they pulled him over, in my opinion. COPA has questioned whether police officials lied when they attributed the stop to a seatbelt violation. More recently, city lawyers fighting a lawsuit brought by Reed's mother have instead cited the tinted windows. Oh, it's always something. The newly released body cam footage shows the five officers repeatedly stopped people for both of those reasons, as well as for moving violations and smoking weed. But in some cases, they didn't appear to provide any explanation for stopping and searching people. None of the searches appeared to result in a traffic ticket, much less a felony arrest. Meanwhile, COPA has opened a separate investigation into another shooting incident that happened a day before Reed was killed. Hmm. As the five tactical officers responded to a block where a group of people had congregated, another cop shot and killed a charging dog, angering residents. We don't do nothing. Every day, we stand here getting stopped and frisked, one person is heard saying in the cam camera footage. It's because these monsters are out on patrol, and they're getting paid humongous money by us to terrorize us. Okay, the videos would seem to support the criticism that heavy-handed traffic enforcement seldom leads to arrests for more serious crime. The ACLU of Illinois last year filed a lawsuit against the city on behalf of black and brown motorists who are stopped at much higher rates than drivers in predominantly white neighborhoods. The practice of using traffic violations as a pretext to search vehicles and their passengers began in 2016 after a Chicago Police Department curtailed pedestrian stops under a settlement with the ACLU. The number of traffic stops rose from fewer than 100,000 in 2015 to the peak of 600,000 in 2019. Oh, they found a new way around it, after which stops dropped dramatically during the COVID pandemic. Hmm. According to data cited in the lawsuit, fewer than 1% of all stops made by CPD officers result in police finding drugs or weapons. The Harrison District, where Reed was shot, is the highest number of shootings per capita in the city and has led the city, to a, in, has led the city in total traffic stops. Oh, they're, they're number one. Okay, a recent analysis showed that traffic stops have fallen by more than 40% this year, coinciding with Snelling's commitment to curtail the practice. Mm. The Harrison District saw the steepest decline citywide, a drop of more than 60%. In the videos released by COPA showing 50 stops over three days, officers found only one gun prior to stopping Reed, and the owner had a permit. The other 49 stops, officers did not appear to even issue a ticket for the alleged traffic violation before moving on. The motorists pulled over by the officers typically seemed annoyed, with several encountering descending, encounters descending into shouting matches before the officers leave the scene. 
but several interactions seemed jovial with the one officer even joking with the man who whom she apparently once ran down on in a foot chase offering to share the video with him the next time she stopped his vehicle oh my goodness hmm some of the stops were contentious but none were aggressive as the encounter with reed in which officers trained their guns on reed's car as soon as he as soon as he was stopped okay the interactions typically are brief lasting only as long as it takes officers to search inside the car sometimes less than a minute the copa files show officers making a roughly two dozen stops during their shift on march 20th wow the day before reed shootout with stops separated only by a few minutes almost always the officers ask the driver if they have any drugs or licenses to own or carry a firearm the latter of which would allow a cardholder to have a firearm in their car that just shows that the traffic offense is just a pretext to get in and search the car, says Crystal Brown, supervisor at the Cook County Public Defenders. Okay, attorneys representing clients in gun cases routinely receive hours of body camera footage that show dozens of traffic stops that lead to searches, Brown said. Brown said she watched hours of similar videos, which often shows drivers complaining bitterly about being stopped for minor or non-existent infractions and rarely shows cops finding contraband. These are officers on specialized units, and they're not required to patrol. They're not doing investigations. So think about that, folks. These guys are literally out there searching. Well, obviously, duh. They're just doing these stops, searching people with questionable, probable cause. That's very rarely leading to any kind of arrest. Okay. And that's, that's what they do. All right, so there's a little more. Oh, no, there's that's it, folks. Okay, let's watch this video together. And... Uh, this took up a lot of time, so I think we're gonna we're gonna make the bad apple report just about this today. All right. Nobody got seatbelts on. Hello, this is traffic stop. Nobody got seatbelts on. You ain't got no seatbelt, dog. You good? Let me get your license insurance. Please just stop and everything. He's not wearing the seatbelt, sir. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I don't got my. You don't? I, I, I put the car in the park? park. Roll the window down for me, G. Shit. Lower the window. What's up, man? Nobody got seatbelts on? Huh? License insurance. Your kid back there? Yeah, she back there. Okay. I wanted to take, if I had, I wanted to take him down. That's what you're saying. All right, man. Y'all be safe, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. What's up, man? You got license insurance? Yes, sir. Ah, right, cool. What's up, man? Why ain't nobody got seatbelts on? Y'all just smoking weed, that's it? Yeah. All right, slide it out, man. No weapons, right? Because you got weed. What you mean? No, no, no. What's the reason you stopping this? No, I just told them you don't got no seatbelts. All right, why you tweaking? What's up, man? Why are you flying down like that, man? I want to fly. You got license insurance? Get the f*** out the car. What's up, man? You got license insurance? Yeah, I do. Can I see it? You have a Ford Carter CCL, sir? Nah, yeah, I got a Ford, but I ain't got no car. You got no gun, nothing like that. I'm reaching for stopping there. You know, wearing the seatbelt. You can get your license and insurance. Oh, you got it. You can look about there, about that. Okay, let's slide the car from right quick, sir. Probably see you guys don't have seatbelts. What's the word? You got license insurance? I ain't got my license. All right, sign out for me, man. No guns on you, right? No, I ain't got All right, sign out.
folks thanks again for hanging out with me in the morning right here to watch the bad apple report i'm gonna whip up another batch and i will see you right back here at 7 30 a.m tomorrow morning bright and early have a great day folks